Hey, what's up, YouTube? On today's video, we're going to be modeling an MTH gondola, Milwaukee Road, and an Athern, Illinois Gulf Central, 40-foot cube boxcar. The materials we'll be using today, we've got Artist Loft, Burnt Umber, Raw Umber. We're going to be using a mixture of those paints with rubbing alcohol. We've got ourselves some pastel chalks, multiple color varieties, some little Dixie cups, and Q-tips. On top of that, you got ourselves some brushes here, brushes there. These I'm using for paints, these I'm using for the pastel chalks, and these are being modeled for a buddy of mine over at the Oak Park Mile Railroad Club, Eddie K. He's got some groups on Facebook I'll have linked below, and you should definitely go check them out. All right, so let's get started. This pointer stick is annoying me already, so I know it's going to annoy you. All right, first step, get yourself a fresh mixing glass or Dixie cup like I'm using. We're gonna go ahead and go about halfway maybe with rubbing alcohol. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the raw umber to get those dark undertones. Squeeze some of that in there. Not too much because you don't want the paint to be too thick. You want this to be a wash and not a actual like paint coating. We're going to be rubbing most of this stuff and cleaning it right off of the locomotive or not the locomotive, the rolling stock in this situation with a uh, Q-tip later and I'll show you that. That's probably the tedious process of this whole thing. So. Uh, go ahead and stay tuned while I go ahead and mix this while up. While I'm mixing this up, I'm actually cleaning off the brushes that were a bit dirty and stiff from the last time I worked on weathering. I have my big old flat brush there, and then I got this little guy. Look how hard that is, not even bending. I scrub that kind of hard at the bottom. It's nice having the hard brush because it actually helps scrape that acrylic paint off the bottom of the cup and move it around a little bit more. That's a bit better. You can see it's actually bending a lot softer now. You see that? That's the that's the thick stuff at the bottom there. That you want to really kind of mix in real well so that your wash is fairly consistent every time you try to apply the brush to the model. All right, so now that I've got the mixture to a nice con consistent uh, texture that I believe will work nicely with weathering this model and possibly even the Milwaukee Road model as well. This stuff goes a long way because you're just applying very thin coats, letting them dry, applying more thin coats, letting them dry, and then washing them away so that only thing that's really left is a bunch of dirt and the details and the rivets. You'll see in a moment while I begin. Let's see, let's brush some of that off. You don't want a real thick coating. Like I said, you want a real thin We'll start on the roof here. See what I did there? It was almost too thick. Well, that's not a problem. We'll just use some of that thick paint that I spread on there, and we can just spread that right along the side of this model and try to get the whole roof with just that one dip of the brush for our first coat. You don't want it to look real clumpy and paint-like, but you do want to fill in all the cracks. If you see what I'm doing here, is I've got getting all those cracks and little wedges in there filled with some of this paint and alcohol mixture, this wash. And what this wash is doing is it's dueling out that plastic look that you get from the factory on a lot of models. And that's kind of the main goal you want to achieve, is to kind of eliminate the look of this plastic shine that it's got. And just by that first coat there, it's still wet, so that's the shine you're seeing, is the wet wetness of it. But you could tell that that is no longer a plastic toy looking model. While the roof is drying, we're going to just touch up a little spot there. And we're actually going to start working on the fronts and the rears of the model. There tends to be a little bit more of a buildup there, because that's where the wheels are spitting up all the road grime. So this can be a little bit heavier than what you'll see on the sides of the model. Or we could just work more coats in there, more coats of this 
wash on it and that will achieve the dirtier grime as well adding more wash coats Make sure you get in all the cracks and crevices. You don't want any of that plastic shine sticking out because that'll just that'll just kind of eliminate the illusion of the weathering seeing the original plastic color shine through. While I wait for this model to dry, I'll place it up here out of the way. And I'll begin to work on the inside here where the wood detail and rivets will be. So with the same paint mixture, or wash I should say, that I was using on the roof and the front and rear of the Illinois Central car, I am going to make sure I get this nice dark wood detail kind of covered up and less yellow plastic looking. MTH makes some very good rivet details, so I'm going to try to accent those with this wash. When the model is all fresh and yellow and looking like a, well, I hate to say it, but looking like a toy because of the plastic look that it's hard to hide. Even with as many details as you put on a model, it's hard to get rid of that plastic look without painting it. And just like that, you could see those rivet details a bit better. You can already see the bit of weathering there just from the first layer of wash on this car. That's what it looks like beforehand. Nice bright, bright yellow. And then that's with a little bit of road grime. And let that dry. Move back onto this IC. While that Milwaukee road gun is drying, we will move on to doing the sides of this Illinois Central with a layer of this watch. So, with some downward strokes. Now with these doors, you're going to want to come in sideways, and that's how you get all of the little nooks and crannies is what, what they say. Same with the little details here, you want to get a little, all in those little cracks in there so that none of that original plastic shines through and kind of eliminates the... Uh, when you when when you have the cracks that shine through it eliminates the illusion of the weathering job. Come in here and make sure you get a nice even first coat on this side. Get those steps real good. This step looks a little bent up there. That's cool though, that all adds to the weathering effect. It's just natural blemishes like that. I'm gonna get a little dab because my left side is a little bit heavier than my right side and that doesn't float my boat. Alrighty, got a little bit of first layer of grime on that. Yep, there goes the coupler. Wah, wah, wah. Flip this around without touching the other side. Move this coupler over. I'll put that guy back on for the third time later. <laughs> All right, the roof is dry, so I can go ahead and just hold it there. Do the same to the other side. While I do the other side, you guys can grab yourself another drink or something. This is going to be real quick. Just so I could get this video going a little bit. I already showed you how I did the other side, so I'll just get this going. Alright, we got the both sides of that Illinois Golf Central box car. We've got that sitting up to dry. Now we're going to start on the sides of this. Here's the inside, a bit shiny because it's still a little wet, but it brings out the little wood groove details. I didn't even know there's wood groove details in there. Now you can actually kind of see a wood grain in the bottom of there. Just one layer of uh, weathering wash right there will do that. Like I said, it just helps bring out some details with also giving it some grime, making it look realistic, like it's been on the actual railroad. 
Now with these, you got a bunch of little cracks you gotta kind of fill in. So that's why I'm swiping left to right instead of up to up and down right now. I can cover up those sideways brush strokes later. And I can go kind of heavy. He wanted this one to look a little bit grimier. So I can go a little bit heavier. And I can also do a few more coats. Sorry about that. Jerk the camera a bit. Oops. So this is sorry, this is such a long well, it's such a long piece of rolling stock, I can't tell if this is a 60 foot or what. He didn't give me a box with it, so I don't know what the specs exactly are. I'll have to check out what the writing says on the side. But this thing is humongous. Alright. Sorry about this, this is my first kind of tutorial video on weathering, so I'm getting used to being able to see the model myself and being able to make sure that you guys can all see. You don't like you don't have to take a lot of time to do this stuff either. It really is just um, if, if you overthink it and kind of overdo it. You can always wash it off and uh, kind of restart. So that's always the beauty of weathering, is you can always just restart by uh, a little bit of water and Q-tip, and this wash actually wa comes right off. Just be careful around the lettering. You don't want to rub your, the little information, informational decals that comes on the box cars. I've accidentally rubbed those away on some of my own before. That's due to uh, too much pressure and the rubbing alcohol that is in the mixture, I believe, kind of loosens up those decals a little bit. But it's also nice because you can fade them away too if you want just a little bit of extra elbow grease with the fading. So that's not too bad to start off with, huh? What I'm mixing up now is a little bit of the raw and burnt umber mixed together to help create a lighter grime tone to add to these cars. Now that I have this new mixture made, this new mixture of wash, it's kind of more of a browner, rustier tone. I begin applying it right over the previous wash jobs. Now we'll begin the Q-tip process. And this is going to remove a bunch of the extra grime that we don't necessarily want on the model. And it's just gonna leave it in the cracks. And I will continue this process all the way down and be right back. These are the results after the washes and the Q-tip technique. Brings out the rivet details. Adding a little bit of grime. Some you could call this done. Some people call this done. I'm going to add some more, uh, some of the pastel chalks to it. And I'm also going to add some... Uh, acrylic paint detail to the uh, the trucks and wheels. Look how great that inner deck turned out. Look at all those wood grain details in there. That definitely looks like it's seen some loads in there, huh? There we go. 
All right, now we're going to start the Q-tip detail on this. We've got ourselves some burnt umber off to the side here. And the skinny brush is what I'm using now. As you can see, I've got one truck down here. We're gonna move on to this one here. So, springs, those caps. A little bit of this acrylic paint does go a long way. <clears throat> Alrighty, <clears throat> now we've got a pretty even coat going on right there. I'm going to jab it. When I poke in it like this, it kind of gives it that rusty texture, that kind of flaky looking texture when it dries. See, now it looks a little bit rougher. It doesn't look as painted anymore. Almost looks like a crust. We'll let this one dry. <clears throat> Move on to this one. Alrighty, finished up the truck and wheel detail on this one. Might add another coat of acrylic once it dries. Now I'll move on to adding some rust streak details with the same paint. We'll begin with the roof on the IC box car. Uh, he didn't really want this one looking too bad, looking too rusty. He models the early era. I just want to make sure I get this looking good enough to the liking of his era of model railroading, which I believe is anywhere from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, but I believe mainly the 60s and 70s. He is a big rail fan, the uh, gentleman who hired me to weather these models for him. As I said before, he has some Facebook pages. I'll mention one of them now. One of them is 1960s and 70s era model railroading. That is one that I am frequently posting on. Posting models at local clubs and posting um, my models here at my, my home layout. My small one that I'm building here with my father. <clears throat> See, look at that. Just a little bit of rust details on 
some of these latches for the roof. These are like, they're like clasps that look like they uh, kind of drilled into place to hold this roof down a little bit. We'll smear a little bit of this stuff. We'll get some of that runny rust. Not looking too bad. Here. This poke technique is very good for rust, I think. I think it really, it eliminates the like brush strokes that are seen in some some cases with weathering. And it kind of just, see the texture that it gives it? That looks like HO scale rust to me. Uh, so I hope if you agree that you would use these techniques on your own models and go ahead and look at me up on Facebook at Weathered Models by Colton and go ahead and tag me there. I'd love to check out the models that you guys weathered using my technique. Or I wish I shouldn't say really my technique, but the techniques that I've learned. And then passing on to other model railroaders like myself and you. It's all random, just kind of imagination. I don't have a prototype that I'm going off of here. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's all a matter of uh, kind of what what they want. They didn't tell me that they didn't. He didn't give me a uh, prototype to go off of. So I'm just kind of going off of word of mouth and my imagination. Not too bad, huh, guys? Let's get a little bit more poking in there. Poke it in, poke it in, poke it in, poke it. Oh, he's gonna poke ya. Pokey, pokey, pokey. Pokemon. Hope I don't get copywritten just for saying Pokemon like that. Sorry this video is kind of timely. I just want to make sure you guys see exactly how I'm doing it. I know a lot of people, they had a lot of cuts. I want to at least show an example of each step instead of uh, just cutting and not showing all of the uh, work that actually goes into it so that you're not confused thinking that this is going to take you five minutes to weather a model. Uh, if you were just doing washes, it could take you just five minutes, but I'm doing a little bit more. Uh, this is a good buddy of mine, and he's a fellow member of one of the local clubs here. It's actually He's actually the guy who introduced me to the Oak Park Model Railroad Club, a.k.a. the Oak Park Society of Model Engineers. All right, so that's the beginning. Looks like that roof is pretty good. A lot of people struggle with roofs. Uh, it's not too hard. It's just a matter of practice, trial and error, and you'll get there. That's a pretty good looking roof. You see, uh, a lot of people don't do much to the roofs because they focus on the siding. And uh, if you're looking down on your layout, you're going to see a whole bunch of roofs of rolling stock. So I figured you should have your roof just about as detailed as you do on the sides. So that's our next step is the sides. While doing the sides of these locomotives. Um, see, this one particularly, I'm not going to do too much. I'm just going to add little crusties on the corners get a little bit of a streak going down here into the foot rail we'll add a little bit more to this rail here this footstep add a little bit of 
clean that brush off a little bit. Get one little neglected area. Kind of crust up these rivets a little bit. I like to add a little bit of stuff um, to the flaps and the latch. A little bit of extra crust on the latch there. Let's make sure we get the hinges and all of that. And get the side of this brush a little bit. A little bit of extra down there. Kind of use your imagination where you think there would be more rust buildup. Go rail fanning, check out box cars. They all kind of weather similarly, but some weather a little differently depending on the region that you're modeling. All right, extra rust details added with the acrylic paints. He wanted this one done a bit more. We got rust streaking there. Now we'll move on to pastels. Get a good mixture of chalks going. Cup to catch all of it in. Basically, you just keep mixing. With the kit that I grabbed, I got over at, I believe, Hobby Lobby or Michael's Craft Store. You get all these colors to choose from. And uh, you just kind of keep grinding away until you mix it all together and get a tone that you like. Let's see where I put my... Here we go. Here's this brush. Give it a quick stir. I did already have a little bit of a mixture going already. I was just adding the final touches in to give you an example of how I prepare my chalks. Let's see if you can see that. Do one of these. See that? I'm going to apply that kind of reddish, grayish toned chalks to the side of these cars. Start with the roof. You could always dust off the extra powders if you feel it's too much. Get it into the cracks there. And kind of brush away all the extra so you could still see the rust details that I did previously. There we go. There's some chalks on there. Move on to the side. 
This is where it'll become a little bit more noticeable. typically do it a little bit heavier towards the bottoms and towards the tops where the buildup seems to be the most on box cars and rolling stock. I do end up getting a little bit everywhere though just because it does help bring out the rivet details here. All right, that's one side with pastel chalks. We'll do the other side and then start on the other model. 